Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Brendan with Evoke Bike. I've been sitting on this video talking about how to get away and stay away in a road race. And a lot of times you have to use VO2 max, anaerobic capacity, and the terrain to actually stay away from a Peloton that is chasing you. Um, real quick, this is the blog. Now that we've been going pretty hard on the YouTube channel and on the podcast, someone said to me the other day, wait, you have a blog? <laughs> This is how it all started. So there are a ton of training articles. Check it out, evoke.bike slash blog. So this video, I'm going to try and keep it very quick uh, in, in just getting you the most information that you need to execute this. So I posted on our TikTok the other day, there's a ton of training and racing videos there talking about if you wanna get away and stay away, it's not riding at 100% FTP. And somebody messaged me saying, hey, do you have a more concrete example of this? Like if you're going over FTP, especially it's later in the race, aren't you just going to blow up? This is something that you definitely have. To, if you want to be a breakaway artist, if you want to get away from 20 people, 40 people, 10 people, maybe it's a late race move from a small group. Either way, if you want to get away from your peers and they are chasing you, which they should be towards the finish line you need to be able to go hard. And it depends on, I'm not gonna get in necessarily in how you want to train this. I wanna make a case that you need to figure out, do you need more anaerobic capacity? Although read the anaerobic blog about more is not always better because of how you create the energy anaerobically. You could technically push your FTP down. That's beyond the scope of this video. Uh, do you need to work on VO2 max? Do you need to work on VO2 max repeatability? There are a lot of different things, but at the end of the day, can you go hard over and over again and keep the bike going quickly to stay away? So this was a training race that I rode out to. I was visiting Rochester, New York. Shout out to Genesee Valley Cycling Club. That is where I cut my chops and whoops, rode out there. This is the entire race. It's a training race on Tuesday night. It is an hour and a half, just under 40 miles. We average just under 26 miles an hour. Here you can see the terrain. So we are going to go one, two, three, four laps. One, two, three, four. Yeah, and it finishes on this slight little climb. Um, the, the biggest thing is, you know, it's a training race. So I'm going out there and I'm riding it. As such, I am attacking a lot. I am going to be on the gas. When you look at this race, this would be to see 14% in active recovery for a road race would be horrible. That would be called failing. Normally, that would be 40, 50%. It depends if you're in the break, if you're not in the break, but it should be way more. Uh, huge distribution amongst all uh, zones. And really, very, 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 very aggressive start as normal. It's a training race. We're hitting it. People are trying to get up the road. It's only an hour and a half, and people have either come from work or this is a big, hard training session for them. The, these races are gold. If you are in upstate New York and you're able to take advantage of these, I learned so much because I was able to go race so many times in a road race situation. It's not like a weeknight crit. There are about eight to 10 courses all around Rochester. And so this was, I think, was it Riga? Yeah, West Side. So rode out there. This is before I ended up going solo. Spoiler alert, that, that's the whole point of this video, right? I broke away at one point. And really what happened, got in a small group and right about here, we were gassing it pretty hard. And I took a big dig, I think from a group of three or four of us and was really trying to just keep the pace up. And these guys were falling off. And I was like, you know, I'm just going to roll solo. I'm going to see who bridges up. So let's take a look. This is the entire race. And you can see it better from up here. This is going to be before I went solo. If you're looking at this chart, you'll see what's highlighted. This is me solo early on and then solo at the end. We're not really going to do the solo and tire as much. That was when I was kind of breaking down, just looking at this on my own back in August. Um, the thing I want to show you is number one, 
remember that when you are breaking away and you are by yourself, everyone always thinks of the finish line as the finish line. The finish line is really, now there's going to be times where they might, the Peloton might see you and the finish line, they're truly chasing you until the end. If you can get out of sight and stay out of sight, a lot of times you might have a mile where you're like, I'm home free. So understand the course. Number one, where is the true finish line? If you can get out of sight, sometimes it's been like, hey, I just need to get over this last climb and it's five miles downhill or it's, you know, whatever it is, and you might have a four mile buffer. You need to know the course and you need to know where are you truly trying to stay away until. Said differently, where do you have to be on the course with what time advantage so there's no chance that they catch you? If that's confusing, sorry, I know it might not come across the right way, but it's a, you need, you're playing a huge game with the people here. There's a lot of uh, psychology and sociology going into riding away from people. When I'm solo early on, clearly going to be on the gas most of the time. And really, I have to go hard, but I'm thinking some people might bridge up and I'm solo for almost an hour. So for the first half an hour, while I'm going hard and keeping it fast, I also need to be cognizant of I'm by myself. I have no teammates. So if I get caught, I still need to have some massive power and kick towards the end, especially because it finishes on that slight uphill climb. It's actually a slight uphill climb into a long straight drag that can end in a sprint. So either way, you need something more than FTP and you need something more than VO2 max. So the orange in this chart is VO2 max wattage. What we're gonna see, which we saw early on, was the very aggressive surges, you know, 1200 watts, 800 watts, 1000 watts, 1100 watts, 1250, 800. So really, I mean, those are the ones that make you say, ouch. And when I'm so early on, there are none of that. It's only 9% anaerobic and tons of threshold and VO2 max. Now, one thing you can also notice, take a look at this. Where am I going hard? Where are those orange portions? I'm going to let you look at this for a minute as I toggle back and forth to show where the power is. Look at this one right here, this big one. What, it, what am I doing right there? I'm going up these rollers. And this is actually a stair step where you come through, you take this right-hand turn, you go downhill a little bit, and then right as, is this where, where is this? There's another stair step too, though, right here that is crucial. Yeah, this portion actually too, before you make the right-hand turn. Um, see, I'm gassing the whole time there, and I'm gassing up this climb. This was the uh, KOM actually for some preem points. But every time it goes uphill, that's where I'm gassing it. You want to keep your speed high. I see riders go off, and where do we always catch them? On any incline or hill because they're not – conserving as much as possible and going fast on the portions in between and they're going at like 100 and 105 percent of these climbs you're not going to stay away from a group like we have so much momentum we have people chasing you need to be vo2 max in the climbs if you are not comfortable with this you need to go out on a bike ride for four hours and vo2 max every climb and that's one thing that jason used to have me have me do i've had riders that have been very strong and i'll ask them to go do this and they don't like going hard they wonder why they don't win big races. And I'm trying to be very polite, but also blunt and say, hey, if you want to win a big race, you keep trying to get away, you're going to get caught. You need to get comfortable being uncomfortable. That This is not a comfortable bike ride. Now, the biggest thing, notice the end. This is the last 20 minutes. Aggressive. Now, you need to take note again. How easy am I going on the downhill here? Extremely easy. I'm not, not even on the gas. I'm in endurance. Going super hard and then using that speed coming over the top and conserving. And you can see again, I'll do the elevation thing. So you can see watts. Uphill is always very, very hard. <laughs> you got to turn yourself inside out if you want to stay away from people. And then think of, you know, what I was trying to say about the finish line is people are going to be chasing 
And when it gets down to two laps, you know people are burning their last matches. So it's like you got to just stay away until all those matches are burned. You got to remember the chase is going to – some people are going to fall off. So while seven people might be chasing you at first, I think there was probably a dozen guys chasing me. And it eventually came down to maybe six, seven. So, I mean, they lost five guys. That's serious firepower to lose. So use that to your advantage. So where is the true finish? Know that you need to be able to go hard. You're going hard up the hills. You're recovering as much as possible on the downhills. What are some things that you can do? Yes, anaerobic training. Yes, VO2 max training. Yes, lactate clearance work, over-unders. Yes, riding an FTP. I mean, there's a ton of FTP in here, but my whole point is it's not just FTP. And I'll even give out a workout like Race Winners is a very popular one from back in the day hard 30 second, like almost full out sprint into a hundred percent FTP for three, four minutes into a sprint at the end. That's for like a move in the last K we're talking about. If you're trying to make a move, if you sense that people are fiddling around and there's, I don't know, how long was I gone for? 20 miles. I mean, I went early, but the opportunity was there. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to roll the dice. It's a training race. I'm going to go for it. Let's do it. And for that hour, I normalized 395. I mean, hell, that's a great training session. That was an hour three and a half of the bike ride. Maybe it started a little bit earlier. Let's see. So either way, uh, the race started at hour three. Uh, Rochester, don't take those two KOMs from me. I hope to see you again soon. If you guys have questions about this, got to train it. Uh, and this is actually a good time to post this video as opposed to posting it last August when the race season was winding down. You're getting ready for racing coming up. You're racing now if you're in the Southeast. And hopefully I see you at some events this season. Take care.